Is your Doberman crying every time you leave the house, maybe yelping and whining and chewing on things that they shouldn't? Or how about barking and making your neighbors want to pull their hair out? <sighs> I mean, how bad can it really get with a stressed out Doberman? Yeah, it can get pretty bad. Your poor, poor neighbors. <laughs> But it doesn't stop with your neighbors either because it affects you too. I mean, you never know what you're gonna come home to with a stressed out Doberman in the house. Okay, well, let's see if a few of these most trusted methods by Doberman owners, including myself, might be the key to stopping the separation anxiety in your Doberman. Okay, I'm willing to bet if you're watching this video, you're probably well aware of what separation anxiety looks like. But just in case, here's a few things to watch out for that might indicate that your Doberman is suffering from this. Uh, one would be howling and barking. That's a really common one, probably the most common one. Also pacing or really any repetitive behavior from your dog. A destructive behavior like chewing on things they shouldn't be, uh, excessive crying or whining, um, swallowing objects that they shouldn't swallow. That's a very dangerous one, especially if any of these things are related or associated to you leaving the house or walking away from your Doberman, then it's uh, very likely separation anxiety related. So you understand what separation anxiety looks like, so let's talk about a few of the tried and true methods that Doberman owners use to address this in a way that this breed understands. First up, get your dog used to your absence. Now, depending on how old your dog is or how much anxiety they might have, this might be really small, short trips away in the beginning. If you have an eight-week-old puppy, you might put them in their pen, and maybe you might just do a real short trip to the other side of the room before you come back and let them out and praise them for not crying. Then maybe next time you go into the other room and brush your teeth and come right back. And then maybe you progress a little further to where you can go outside and talk to a neighbor for 10 minutes, or maybe you go to a grocery store for 30 minutes, and then you work up to an hour away from the house. But slowly acclimating your dog and desensitizing them to your absence is a great thing to do that's really gonna help on more of a long-term basis with separation anxiety. And how old your dog is and how well they're handling this progression is gonna play a role in how fast you move through this. Number two, make their pen or crate their happy place. If you plan to leave them in their pen, for example, when you leave the house, and that really has to be a positive, fun experience being in that pen. One great way to do that, especially when the dog's a young puppy, is when they fall asleep during the day or they fall on your lap, gently pick them up and transfer them into their pen. You can even leave the door open if you're just there watching them. Then they get to wake up in their pen, all relaxed and feeling good and have a lot of good feelings inside that pen. Make sure that there's a lot of positive experiences in that pen. It's not just a place to stuff your dog when you don't want to deal with them. Next up, desensitize your dog to their anxiety triggers. A very common trigger for Dobermans is something like when their owner goes and grabs their car keys, right? You put them in their pen, you grab your car keys, now your dog's going to start stressing and flipping out. Well, the best way to handle this is to start to desensitize them. Start to get used to you grabbing your car keys throughout the day randomly, even when you're not leaving the house. Maybe it's the garage door going up. If that's the case, start opening the garage door a few extra times during the day, even when you're not leaving the house, so that slowly they start to disassociate that trigger with you leaving the house, and it starts to become a normal part of everyday life. Now, next up is to make sure your dog's been well exercised and has a full belly before you leave the house. Now, Obviously, Dobermans are working dogs. They have all that pent-up energy, and if you don't get a release for that for them, they're just gonna naturally be stressed out, even if you're not leaving the house. So make sure your dog's well exercised throughout the day. And another big stressor for dogs in general is food. Making sure they have a full belly will really add to their relaxed feeling inside their pen or their crate or wherever you have them before you leave the house. Get these two things working in your favor and it's gonna drastically reduce the issues of separation anxiety. Next up is to put your Doberman in their pen about 15 minutes or so before you leave the house. This is such a great tip because really the action of putting your dog in their pen is a huge trigger for most Dobermans. If you put them in early, then they can kind of see you mulling around the house, getting things done, kind of slowly getting ready for work, but they know you're not leaving right at that time. So the trauma of going into the pen where they kind of know they're confined and you leaving isn't one big monster scary thing. They're two separate 
hopefully manageable things because you space them out with about 10 to 15 minutes of time between them. Okay, real quick before we get into a few more really cool tricks, including the one that I think will make the biggest long-term impact on separation anxiety in your dog, I do want to take a second to ask you to please check the subscribe button down below this video. Make sure that it is gray and not red. If it is red, please click the button to subscribe to this channel and the little bell icon next to it. I'd really appreciate it. You know, I don't subscribe to a lot of channels myself, but uh, I do subscribe to the ones that I really appreciate and help me in my daily life. If we've helped you at all in your daily life, please take a moment to subscribe. It'll allow us to keep putting out this free content to help you out with your Doberman. Okay, thank you so much guys for hitting that subscribe button. It really means a lot. Let's get on to the next technique. Next up is to use some background noise. It's traumatic enough when you leave the house, but having a house go from an otherwise kind of chaotic environment or busy environment to just dead silent, that by itself can be pretty traumatic for your dog and really kick off anxiety, especially in that first critical 10 minute window of you leaving the house. Remember if a dog uh, gets really stressed in that first 10 minutes or so and starts to get anxiety then, the chances of them continuing that anxiety through the whole time you're gone are drastically higher. So we gotta get through that first 10 minutes when you leave. Great way to do that is just to not have it be dead silent. Put on some background noise, a radio, television, something, music, something kind of calm and relaxing before you leave the house. Number seven is to give a really special treat or toy to your dog when you leave. Now this is part of reassociating the trigger of you leaving the house with something positive and also to help make their pen kind of their happy place. Have something really unique that you only pull out when you leave. They don't get it any other time. Maybe it's a really cool puzzle toy or some sort of toy with a treat inside or some peanut butter or something like that or just their favorite toy ever in the whole world and it hides in the cupboard until you're leaving. Give that to them when you leave. It takes their mind off of the trauma of you leaving and focuses it on the toy or treat or puzzle toy, whatever it is that you give them. This is a great way to snap them out of going down that cycle into uh, high anxiety and focus in on something really positive. It reassociates that trigger, does a lot of good for a lot of Dobermans. Speaking of toys, next one is to provide plenty of different chew options for your dog. Chewing is a natural way to relieve stress. So naturally, you're gonna wanna give your dog plenty of other options, different types and textures and feelings of different toys, soft toys, hard toys, rubber toys, bones. Uh, frozen toys are a great one that you pull out of the freezer and could cool down, especially if your dog is going through teething stages, you know, up till about six months of age. If you have a young pup like that, definitely want lots of textures. This can all help to greatly reduce the overall anxiety and provide a good outlet for your dog while you're away. Next up, and this is one of the biggest and most effective ones in a long-term sense, in my opinion, is to leave and return to the house casually. I know you're gonna miss your dog like crazy, but if you give these big elaborate goodbyes and you're just jumping around and hugging your dog and getting those kisses, and then when you come back, you do this big elaborate, oh my gosh, I missed you, and you're jumping all around, it really does add like a mental marker in their head for the action of you leaving and returning. Just the whole action of you being gone becomes something that's a bigger deal overall to them. Instead, put them in that, in that pen 15 minutes before you leave, like I mentioned earlier, and then just kind of casually do your thing and casually walk out. When you get home, come home casually, put your keys down, do a few things for a couple minutes, and wait a few minutes before you casually open the door and let them out. Then maybe you can pet them a few times, but making it seem like a smaller deal to us humans will actually, believe it or not, make it seem like a smaller deal to your doberman too. Remember, they're great at reading us and reading our body language. So use that to your advantage. Next up is the biggest key to success I could possibly give you guys. This is what's gonna make the long-term difference so you don't have a dog forever that suffers with separation anxiety. And what this is, is using the power of habit here. I've discussed the power of habit with the Dobermans and how incredibly powerful it is in the past. But here's how you use it with separation anxiety. Every time you leave your dog, and you come back and no signs of separation anxiety have occurred, your dog hasn't gotten stressed out and you let your dog out, that's a win for you in the win column. Look at it like a needle. And when you leave and come back and there's no signs of separation anxiety, that's one tick in your direction. If you do it again, that's another tick. They're less likely to have anxiety. But now, let's say you leave and your dog starts crying because you're gone longer than normal and you finally come back after they've been crying for a little bit, oh, that's a tick in the wrong direction. And if you get too many of those in a row, eventually your dog's gonna build that habit where they just naturally become anxious when you leave all on their own. So instead, get as many of these wins in your column as possible until you can tick that dial over and they form that habit of not becoming stressed, instead becoming relaxed 
when you leave the house. This is way easier said than done, guys. The way you do it is by progressing slowly, desensitizing your dog to your absence. And the way that most people mess up, here's how most people mess up. I'll tell you exactly how. They start doing this progression thing, leaving their dog a little bit longer, a little bit longer, and maybe they're working from home. And they walk away, and they're like typing on the keyboard, like, my God, I've gone 10 minutes, and my dog hasn't cried yet. This is awesome. I can actually get work done. Wow, this Doran Planet guy knows what he's doing. This is working. And he's, then you start typing away and working, and then you hear crying, oh, man, I wanted to get a little more work done, but now my dog's crying. I'm going to go back and let him out. You just pushed it too far. Now your dog has cried. Now tick, that goes in the uh, lose column and it's now a lose for you. That's how most people mess up. They get excited about the progress they're making. They push it a little further than they should. And then before they know it, they're now getting too many losses in the row and their dog builds this habit of having anxiety when they leave the house. So don't let that happen to you. Get as many wins in your column as possible. If you're interested in learning exactly how I eventually worked up to being able to leave my Doberman Arlo home alone with completely free roam of the house and trust that he wasn't gonna get too anxious to where it'd be a problem, I did a video all about my first time leaving a home alone and how I worked up to that. That should be popping up right there on your screen. And uh, also take a look at some of these other videos that are popping up on your screen. I think you're gonna find some good info in there that should make your life a little easier with your Doberman. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you on the next Doberman Planet.